Morning guys, it's about 6 a.m. Bora's out here, she's gonna help me with something. I'm not sure what it is. Got one main thing I wanna show you guys this morning, but first, we gotta open all the stuff that we got yesterday, delivery-wise. So let's get started with an unboxing. Let's see what the post office and UPS and FedEx brought us yesterday. Start with the big one this time. Guys, I found a surplus on uh, eBay. I'll leave a link down in the description for um, 100 feet. Is that right? Or is this not here? This is some thick heat shrink tubing. Holy crap, it's almost garden hose thick. But um, I think there's 100 feet of one inch, 100 feet of three quarter, and 250 feet of quarter inch uh, shrink tube. Probably won't need to buy shrink tubes for the rest of my life now. That's what we got. That's it. I think that was it for the unboxing today. Alright guys. Today I want to go over something uh, that I've been studying for a little bit. I had to do a bunch of research. It's hidden on the internet pretty deep and it took me a while to find out all this information but I just want to go over this with you guys so you understand better and uh, there's no more misinformation from what I understand. Um, this device which is the governor off of 3116 mechanical does. So just to let you know uh, some people believe that there's only one version of these, well, they're wrong. There's five different versions based on horsepower. And the biggest difference being that the cam inside here that drives the transfer pump has different lift and duration on it. So if you look at this, I have the transfer pump off of here right now, but uh, down inside here sits a little transfer pump and then there's a cam that rolls around and comes and pushes it up every rotation or so. So, um, the duration and lobe and lift and all that is different on each model. Um, we're going to get into some of the adjustments on this this morning, which is the main reason I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, you obviously have your fuel inlet here, which is where the transfer pump sits, and your outlet going to the fuel rack. Uh, there's a few adjustments on this. And the main one that I want to get to here, I'll show you in a bit. But um, these two screws on the top, this is your low idle adjustment, and this is your high idle adjustment. So you can monkey around with those if you want. Most people don't, unless your idle is really high. Um, Dave, if your idle is still really high, you may want to adjust this a little bit. If you're for certain that this is closing all the way, but you may want to adjust this a little bit. Uh, high idle, I wouldn't mess with that too much because um, you're increasing the RPM of the motor and you all know what that does. The main reason I wanted to get into this this morning is because of this triangle cap here that's got a pin in the center of it. Now what this is, is Caterpillar's attempt to meet an EPA regulation on this motor and it's a anti-smoke valve or a uh, boost compensator valve 
It's basically the reverse of what happens in a gasoline engine. When you press the accelerator, there's an enrichment valve so it doesn't detonate. On diesel engines, it's kind of the opposite. They'll smoke if they have enrichment. So what this does is this pulls fuel out until the boost hits zero vacuum and then it releases and then it starts dumping fuel into the motor. For some of you guys that um, have the higher horsepower trucks, it's a lot more noticeable. It'll be sluggish, 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 and then all of a sudden you're in second gear and it's taken off like a rocket. Well, you can actually adjust this. Um, I believe on our engines, there is a set screw behind here. And uh, if you back it out a turn or a turn and a half or two turns, it will make a big difference on the throttle response of the motor. So basically, what I'm gonna do this morning is I'm going to try to machine a tool um, that will fit in this. And this has like a security wire around it, so they really don't want you getting inside it. But we're gonna break all that free on this spare one I have. I, I'm not using this on any motor probably ever again because um, the fuel cam in it is different and it won't match up to my turbo because I did the 290 horsepower upgrade. So. Let's get into it. Let me see if I can find something that's gonna work that we can machine down to drop into this and get this cap off of here and see what's behind it. I found an old railroad tie. I'm gonna cut the end off of it and uh, see if I can machine that down. worked out a little bit better. All I did is cut a triangle section out and then um, did a small hole with the initial bit and then a little bit larger and then I finished it with the unibit because this pin in here is actually tapered so it makes a uh, nice tight fit into that. Let's see if we can break her loose now. guys you see down in there let me get a flashlight here you see down in there there's two screws and then if you look over there there's like a little rocker um, it's kind of hard to explain let's uh, let's go in the house and I'll show you um, a diagram I'm going to leave a link down in the description for um, this uh, little web page thing they got going on here. But you see this little um, rocker arm thing here? That's your air screw. Um, and this little doodad here that's got a 2 millimeter Allen and an 8 millimeter uh, nut on it is the adjustment. So, basically what we want to do, if you go down here, you can read the explanation. There's a um, really good explanation here by a master tech from Caterpillar. Um, and he's talking about all the different parts. And screw 
So he talks about how to take the cover off like we just did. And there's a two fingered lever behind the end of the shaft. And it's a pin with a round disc on the end. You can only see the disc, it is not numbered on the drawing. And screw number 34 is a screw that holds back the control and this is why you need to back out to increase response. So we're gonna go back out there and we're gonna back that out like a turn, I think is what he suggested. And uh, then we'll go from there. So guys, uh, it is that smaller screw that's down further and it's got the little uh, two millimeter Allen head and it's a seven millimeter nut that's around it. Um, I don't have enough hands to do this. Maybe I do. You can see that it's the correct one if you stick your Allen wrench in it and you can move it back and forth. This other one is for how much fuel it takes out so like it maximizes uh, on the return and so from what I can tell it's just a stop you see where it goes down and it touches the rocker there it's just a stop for um, this little thing here you see how it rests against it I know it's really hard to see down in there but it stops it from coming back. So um, let's go out on the truck and uh, replicate this cap removal and then we'll do some adjustments on it. So the screw on this one was set pretty deep in there which seems to be pretty common with the 290 horsepower variants of this motor. So I backed it out two turns. Let's, uh, let's start up the truck and uh, let it warm up and see if it makes a difference. tell right away that it, the throttle is much more responsive just from that small adjustment. I think I'm going to leave it right there and uh, if I need to adjust it further I'll do that at a later time. Guys, let me tell you something. If Even if you don't have the horsepower upgrades, I, I strongly recommend you making a tool and taking that cap off and backing that screw out at least a turn. Um, I had the horsepower upgrades done and to me it was like a ho-hum or whatever. It all had to do with that adjustment screw. That brought the truck to life instantly. I just took it for a drive around the block and it freaking takes off like a rocket ship now um, like I said if 
if you can figure out a way to get that cap off of there and make some small adjustments on that, I recommend it. Um, even with the 225 horsepower uh, versions, I would guess that that's going to make a big difference in drivability because they are so sluggish off the line because of that aneroid valve. So that horsepower upgrade combined with the aneroid valve adjustment made a huge difference. I strongly recommend doing it. There's one other thing I want to work on this morning you guys keep mentioning and it's the fact that the ladder is going to tip sideways when we're walking up it uh, out in the middle of nowhere. Well, I'm going to address that concern this morning. Um, I'm just going to get after it and let's see what I come up with. This is the solution that we use. All it is is a cable. It's got two carabiners and it's attached to the top, well, the next to the top step. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna tip over. No problems. So, that issue is done with. We don't need to talk about it anymore. We don't need eight million more comments on it. I'm just messing with you guys. I do appreciate the help at times. Uh, sometimes my brainstorming doesn't work as well as it should, but that's definitely a solution. Plus, if we're out somewhere, it's harder to walk away with that expensive ladder. Well, $170 expensive, but that's a good solution there. Short episode today, guys. I want to thank you for joining me though. A uh, very important episode though, especially for anybody that owns these trucks. Get that aneroid valve adjusted correctly. Don't let the silly adjustment that uh, the manufacturers put on it just to meet EPA regulations uh, set you back. Now don't go saying, well, Sean Filner told me to uh, do this and so I'm rolling coal everywhere. Don't adjust it to the point where it shoots out black smoke on bicyclists and stuff like that. And I know some of you guys are going to do that now, but I didn't tell you to do it if that's what you decide to do. But other than that, um, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit like, subscribe. There might be one more video this weekend, you never know. But as always, I'll catch you guys next time. See you later, bye-bye.